It talks about spread of the data. It's basically talking about how far apart it is. Now remember, you're going to need want slash need these notes on your homework quiz that we take on Thursday. You can use all of your notes, all of your homework, all, anything that basically you have written out. To help you with that little quiz over your really last grade opportunity. We're going to be making tables and stuff, so make sure you have paper to make the tables. Um, we're going to be finding the measures of dispersion in two ways. One is the range. So if I ask you for the range, it's just the biggest number minus the smallest number. Simple as that. And then the standard deviation takes a little bit more work to do. It tells how far each, um, well, on average, all the points are away from the average, the mean. A few steps. Um, the question is, which is better to have a small or large standard deviation? It's really better to have a small one. So that means your data is all pretty close together or consistent. So if you have a very large standard deviation, that usually means that the data is very skewed in one way or another. I just know about this mainly because I'm in this field, but a lot of times if you look up educators or teacher salaries or things like that, the data, when it seems like it's not bad at all, it seems really high, but the data is very skewed because it included in those salaries are like superintendents, principals, all of those, and they make a lot more than just your average teacher. So the standard deviation in that case would be a pretty big number because those numbers are a wide variety of numbers. Here are the steps to finding the standard deviation, which we're going to do. Uh, you need to jot these down so that you know how to find the standard deviation when it comes to it. 
that X with a little line over it is called X bar. It's, it just stands for the mean. Just walked by. Oh, no. I thought the way she walked by because I saw you for a second and then <laughs> I didn't know it was you. These are our last notes. You have your own cosplay. Oh, which one? I did. That's okay. You know which one? Um, the second one on the third row. Oh. Yep. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, really. I mean, because that Friday is crazy to attend. So, and I guess if you need to come up here before ten, make sure you have something going. Mm. Yeah, so for these numbers, we are going to find the standard deviation. Our first step, after you have all these numbers, is to find the mean, right? That was step one? Yep. X bar? Okay, good. I forgot. So to find the mean, you just add all those numbers up, and you divide by however many numbers there are. And they don't have to be in order or anything. Now there's a total of six of them. What do you get when you add them all up? 72. Yeah, 72, and then divided by 6 is 12. That's cool when they come out nice and neat. If they don't, just round them to at least one decimal. It's fine. That one does come out nice and neat. Step two, I believe, is to make the chart. Yeah. So we have a chart with x, x minus x bar, and then x minus x bar squared. So 
x's are these numbers that are given to you. Okay, so it's easiest just to do this as one quick step in your calculator. You would just type in, you know, 7, the 7 that you have here, and then you'd hit minus this number, 12, hit enter, so that's negative 5, and then before you hit any other button, you hit the squared button, which is right above the log button, it's diagonal from the 7. On the left, you hit squared. It should come up answer squared and hit enter. It's always going to be positive on this last one. So if it told you it's negative, change it to positive. Because negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25. If it told you it was negative, it's because it's doing 5 times 5 and then putting the negative in front of it. So when you take 7, no, it's not going to be that. You take 7 minus 12, get that number and then square. Whoa. Now you're going to do the same thing. You'll do 9 minus 12. 